In today's video, we're taking a look at the one of one Magic the Gathering card. And uh, is this a good idea? What's up guys, we're back with another video. And yes, this is a video discussing a Magic card. Let's just throw this out there. This video is not sponsored. Let's continue with that in mind. But Magic the Gathering has just, I've seen this recently. It's a Lord of the Rings collab. So there's like a, a ring on the card. I'm gonna show you guys this from an article in a minute, but it's a Lord of the Rings collab. And supposedly what I've heard, I haven't done a lot of research on this yet. We're gonna go through this article. It's a one of one, which means there's only one of the card. Like all the, all the boxes that are printed, there's one time you can pull it. One person's gonna get it. That's it. There's no other options. Now for Yu-Gi-Oh, we have stuff like Starlights that are like one in 25 boxes. Like, wow, that is extremely rare. It takes 25 boxes to pull like the Starlight Rare Apollosa or something like that. And then it's like $1,500 because it's that rare. Now think about a card that there's literally one. Let's go ahead and hop in and take a look. So on this MTGRocks.com, the rarest MTG card may be too rare for its own good. And that may be true. So we're just going to go through this and see what exactly the deal with this thing is. I figured this isn't Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's a trading card new and when they get to something like serialized cards where there's like a number on it where it's like a one of one that's kind of a big deal that's a sports card thing that's been going on for a long time and it's like artificial rarity and I'm gonna kind of discuss if I think that's a good idea or a bad idea on this article it says throughout recent sets Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro have been pushing the artificial collectability of MTG more and more artificial collectability that's talking about like a force collectability so it's like when you make something a one out of ten so there's ten, 10 of them you can pull one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's all the options. It's just a regular card, but it has a number on it that they've limited artificially. So that's what they're saying there. Uh, it's not like, oh, I love Blue Eyes White Dragon. I want to collect Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's really cool. They're like, hey, here's this card called the Ring of Destruction. That's a real Yu-Gi-Oh card. Maybe I should have said something else. I don't know. The, let's just the, the Ring of D and uh, there's uh, 10 copies of it. That's why you want it. And they're like, but can you play it? And they're like, no, it's just one out of 10. Uh, is it cool looking? Nope, there's just 10 of them. That's artificial collectability. Okay, creating new foil techniques, art treatments, and serialized cards. So this is like kind of, it's kind of like Starlight Rare. So you'd be like a Starlight Rare is kind of an artificial collectability as well, because they're like, usually there's a secret rare version of it or a super rare version of it. And then there's the Starlight Rare as well. Art treatments, serialized cards is what we're talking about with the numbers. Uh, collectible market has been more saturated than ever before. This is happening in basically every TCG. There's a bunch of ways these companies are trying to figure out ways to make you want to collect their cards cards because they're new. They're printing a lot of them. So if you print millions of cards, how do you make it stay collectible for more than like a week? You know, because if you know, there's so many different options, they become really cheap. So, so they're trying to figure out the perfect balance of how to make it collectible, worth something and still print a bunch of it so they can make a lot of money. Despite collectibles being pushed to new extremes within every recent MTG set, it doesn't appear Wizards is slowing down. And the thing with Wizards that now I've done a lot of research on this ever since our Wizards fiasco, Wizards has been printing a lot of products. So they are, they're really Really shoving it down people's throats but that's kind of a thing with trading cards in general like usually we release a lot of sets that's kind of a thing but they are apparently going super hog wild on this so that's a thing i think a lot of people are upset about that if anything wizards is still ramping up especially for lord of the rings tales of middle earth set i'm not gonna lie this sounds like a cool set because lord of the rings awesome which is, I mean, I don't do, do a lot of magic, but a magic card with Lord of the Rings on it sounds pretty fun. As announced yesterday, this upcoming Universes Beyond MTG set features a serialized card more collectible than any other. Rather fittingly, this card is, of course, the One Ring. If you have somehow not seen Lord of the Rings, the One Ring is like a, the main focus of the entire series. Go watch it if you haven't. I'm just going to just thank me later. Just go watch. It. While obviously poised to be incredibly expensive, there are some concerns. Namely, this one in three million MTG card could be too rare for its own good. I think that's literal. I think there's there's going to be three million and there's one of them. So here's the Reddit post that it brings you to. Only one card has been printed of the one of one ring serialized 001 card printed with a captivating traditional foil treatment and ring inscription flavor text. This card can only be found in English language collector booster boxes and the odds of the collector booster, including the one ring serialized card is less than 0.00003%. That's very low. Collector boosters may also contain non-foil double rainbow foilized serial elven, dwarven, or human soul ring cards. So I guess that like these are also serialized, but they're not one of ones. So they're probably like one of of 100 or whatever. Elven Ring Art, less than 0.01%. I mean, that's pretty rare. That seems like that's rare enough. Then this is like by far like the most common one, I guess. Oh, actually 0.25 and 0.3. So yeah, they're all so really rare. Human Ring, non-serialized ring cards are mechanically identified to their serialized versions. So uh, this means the number of collector booster rocks will be 3 million. So they did, the, they did the math there based on like how many there are going to be and they figured out there's going to be 3 million on estimate or whatever. So if there's one total ring and there's 3 million boosters, you know, you get one in 3 million boosters. So that is absurdly rare. 
rare. So if you compare that to a Starlight Rare in Yu-Gi-Oh, that's one in 2,880. So that's really hard to pull, right? It's one in 2,880. And then you compare it to one in 3 million. That's literally not in the same ballpark. It's absurd. So this card is going to go for crazy money if people are interested in it. Let's just see what they say about that. The one ring, not going to lie, fire looking card. It looks amazing. I think it looks awesome. I think they did a good job with the artwork and how it looks. In case you've somehow missed all the hubbub about it already, I have missed it. And this is what we're talking about. This incredibly app card will be technically be the rarest in MTG's history, which should uh, make it the exceedingly expensive considering a single mtg card sold for 800k it is not uh entirely unreasonable to imagine it selling for 1 million dollars i don't know will it will it sell that high i know i know it's like the rarest one because if you go back to like alpha and stuff like that they have like what 1100 rares or something like that i don't know i think that's what they're around the right number so that's 1100 more basically than the one of one but that's also from 19 what 93 or whatever so 30 years at this point so 30 years old versus this which is brand new so will it actually get to the million i don't know but it's also a lot rarer than those which are already extremely rare so maybe it could be that's absurd to think about but a brand new card going for a million i guess it's possible in reality however the perspective price tag might be a little wide of the mark yeah that's what i think after all the brothers uh were serially lost cards all sold for significantly under their theoretical value which we calculated so they calculated that they're saying it could be a million but it's a brand new card people probably aren't that interested there's no nostalgia connected to it stuff like that ultimately until the card is axed in players hands there's no telling how much the one ring will be worth so I'm guessing this isn't playable because this looks like, uh, you know, the, the the script from like the Lord of the Rings text and stuff. So I guess you can't play it. It's just a collector card, which means like there's going to be no value for it being played. You know, what would be crazy is if it was actually a really good MTG card and like there's one guy that has it. He's just over there just waxing people with it and nobody can do anything because there's only one of them. Curiously, despite the card's rarity preeminence, guesses about the value vary a lot from one player to another. Reddit user, this guy, for instance, suggests the rather tame guess that it'll be worth 10 to 20K easily maybe more on the other end of the spectrum could be worth six figures with the value only increasing beyond that i think 10 to 20k is probably low for a one of one i think it'd probably go for more than that um this is the ultimate financial flex for a wealthy idiot true true it is but also if you think about uh 10 to 20k Pokemon cards have like black labels that grade. I think it was the Moonbrion that sold for like $12,000 in a black label. And there are hundreds of thousands of that card. You could argue, well, it's a black label. So there's only like one of that, you know, so it's pretty rare. You know, there's there's only a, one of this black label. Yeah, but there's hundreds of thousands more that could be graded. You got a lower end version like this. this there's only one of this card ever, assuming they don't reprint it, which <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. I think that 10 to 20K, I mean, that's in the same ballpark as black labeled new Pokemon cards. So I think that it probably goes for more than that we'll have to see as tantalizing as the one of one card may be the one ring simply doesn't come close to the black lotus yeah as we said earlier a lot older a lot more iconic playable in old formats thanks to its power and prestige black lotus has longed to be seen as the ultimate mtg collectible this has allowed pristine examples of the card to obtain ridiculous prices while the one ring may be rare it's unclear if ex exclusivity alone will command a similar price yeah there are so many different things it's just exclusive i will say it looks cool but it doesn't have the nostalgia it doesn't have the uh you know the playability it doesn't have like all the memories connected with the Black Lotus that all the people from back then have versus this, I guess you could be like, well, Lord of the Rings does, but Lord of the Rings wasn't a trading card game that you were really into for the most part. There was a trading card game, by the way, but it wasn't that popular. So this one of one ring coming out really begs the question of like, should we be making serialized cards in trading card games? In sports, they do this a lot because sports are not a trading card game. They're simply collectible. All you're doing is collecting the cards. You can't play a game where you're like putting Babe Ruth out and he's hitting a home run against your opponent or anything like that. You're just collecting the card because you like the players in the sport that you're watching. TCGs are a lot different because there's a playable side and there's also a collectible side. So a lot of the collectible side comes from it formerly being playable, it being in an anime that you watch, stuff like that. The anime kind of equates to watching the sport, like you're watching a sport, you're interested in it. You're watching the anime, you thought it was awesome. The anime with blue eyes, white dragon blew away like you know, Yugi's grandpa or whatever in the first episode. But then there's that whole thing of where you played that Blue Eyes deck as a kid and you really liked it and it was terrible. But then they made more Blue Eyes support in 2016 and you kept playing it then. And then that adds to the lore of the Blue Eyes. It's not just anime. It's also playable, but not very good. You played it in a tournament though and you once got a, you know, a big match win and it was amazing. And all this stuff comes together into one to make the most collectible possible thing. But with this one ring, it's interesting because 
they do have that artificial scarcity. Old stuff has scarcity because it's been around for a long time. It's been destroyed. It's been played. It's been lost. It's been thrown away by your mom. All that stuff is included in the last 20 years. But when you have just printed it like a box, so this new Lord of the Rings set, it's literally not even out yet. As soon as you get it, every single person is going to be looking for this one ring. And when they pull it, there's no way they're letting their mom throw it away. Like they're immediately going to be looking to sell it probably for the most part, unless they're like literally searching for it for their collection or something like that. It just doesn't have the same scarcity because this was artificially made by the company saying, hey, we're making one of these. So if you pull it, it's great. So there's some negativity to that. There's also like something cool about it, putting a chase in a booster box. I think that this is something cool that you can do if you are also making the rest of the set good as well. I've always been a big fan of Starlight Rares and Yu-Gi-Oh. They aren't serialized. They don't have numbers or anything like that, but they are very, very difficult to pull. And if the set they are included in is awesome, like there's a lot of great playable cards, and then you have that potential to pull that really big chase card, it makes opening that box that much more worth it because you're not only going for those cards that you want to play or collect, but you're also have that small chance of hitting like the lottery or hitting that big card, which as a pack opener, I think is really, really fun. And I think it's cool. But when you go too far down that lottery, like chase route, and you end up just going for those like numbered cards or those super high rarity cards that you pull one every 2000 boxes or whatever this is going to be, it's going to be even more than 2000 boxes at this point. And you like forget about the people that play the game. You forget about the people, the low end collectors who just want to collect like cool $2 cards and stuff like that. You can lose a lot of your audience and it can go the complete wrong way. Now, I don't know much about this Lord of the Rings set. I don't know if it's a good set. I don't know if it's going to suck. Maybe it hasn't even been announced yet, but I think that the key with this thing, it's okay to put a one of one card in the set, I think. But if this is the only chase of the box and they're selling garbage just so you're basically buying a lottery ticket to get a one of one Lord of the Rings card, I think that is bad. But if we were to see Yu-Gi-Oh do this and include it in a really awesome set like Magnificent Mavens last year, where we had those collect like secret Pharaoh rares and we had those awesome reprints that were very affordable, like four and five dollars. You were able to get your Opelosas and all that different stuff. And then you had a one of one chance while also buying that. I think that would be really exciting. So I figured I'd talk about this. It's just such a crazy thing that they're doing a one of one card in a trading card game. It's amazing. I don't know if Yu-Gi-Oh will ever do it, but I am interested to see what happens with this. If it does get pulled, like honestly, in theory, it could never get pulled. Like there's yeah, what 3000 or 3 million packs. We said like, what if those packs never get bought and nobody ever pulls it? It could happen. Like it's insane. So I'm interested to see if somebody actually pulls it and then if they sell it, what does it go for? Does it go for auction? Are they going to sell it privately? It's just going to be fun to see and follow. And I think that it would be interesting to see it happen in Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't necessarily want it to happen, but if it does, I think it would be fun. It seems like Magic and Pokemon always have a lot of news going on, like Pokemon having huge sales or Magic doing something super controversial. But uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, we're just hanging out over here doing our thing. So I guess we'll just keep that up. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy this update video on some current news. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Daxter, JT Cho, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto DeAnda, Dizzy, Hoppus, Choice 333, Macycle, James Jance, TCG Trust of Cards, America Deutzer, Supreme Sage 21, and Nana Tai Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barty, Mimic Gecko, and Thomas McLean. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.